by faith into the grace in which we stand, and we celebrate in hope of the glory of God. So always in your mind as a believer, you have that hope and in your heart deep, deep down. Even when you're going through horrible, horrible times, that's the thing that separates us. We have this great hope and this joy that's planted deep, deep, deep within our hearts, even when we go through hard times, because we go through super hard times just like unbelievers as well. And but the difference is, is this hope and this deep-rooted peace that we have. And then here it says, Paul says, and not only this, but we also celebrate in our tribulations. So we celebrate in our hard times, right? Knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance. What does that mean? Well, when I was an army ranger, okay, we went through hard stuff, man. I mean, I thought I was going to die. I wanted to quit so many times, but I just, for some reason, didn't quit because I'm so stubborn. But in the long run, not when it was happening, <laughs> and I knew somewhere deep down that if I made it through that, there would be a reward, something, it would be a payout, it would be worth it. But in the long run, those super hard times of days without sleep, without food, uh, you know, instructors just treating you like garbage, uh, making things really hard for you, there was this character that was proven from it. And later, it was almost like bragging rights, not not in a prideful way, but like bragging rights like to, for yourself. Like, I did that. I, could, I, could, I did it. I can do it again. And I can encourage others to do it too. And when you look back on it, you know that it made you better, that it was something that proved your character and helped you to be a better man, helped me to be a better man. Because deep down, even if the whole world's against me, even if a bunch of guys at my work hate me and despise me and lie about me, it doesn't matter because I know my character deep down. I know that I've been proven, especially as a Christian. I know that God has allowed me to go through these hard times to prove that he's going to be there with me. He's going to help me through it. And there's this great hope and there's this great joy deep inside my soul, like a well that's springing up living water that's deep in there. And that's the Holy Spirit. That's God putting his seal of approval on you, his seal that, he, that you belong to him by the Holy Spirit who lives inside of me. And if you're a believer, he lives inside of you. If you're not a believer, you could become one and he could take residence in you, in your heart and in your soul. And that's what you, that's what being born again is about. And that's what you want to go to heaven, to be with Jesus. So, all right, let's continue in the scripture, you guys. So fun to do this, right? So Romans, this is a great book, by the way. This book will help you grow in the knowledge and in the love and in the relationship of Jesus Christ. Okay, so not only this, but we celebrate in our tribulations. Seems like an odd thing. It's totally against what the world says. We celebrate in our hard times, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance. And perseverance, proven character, right? It proves that you are uh, able to be an army ranger, that you're uh, worthy of becoming an army ranger because you did it. You, it was proven. Prove, proven character, hope, right? And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts, right? The Holy Spirit, right? Through the Holy Spirit, here it is. Who was given to us? Wow. God, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, God the Holy Spirit, who was there with the Son, Jesus, and the Father from the beginning, making this universe and the world and you and knowing who you were ahead of time, he's planted within your heart. Uh, and I love the wording in that is like he's poured like 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 warm ointment or healing warmth. Like back in the old days, they they made olive oil and they would mix sometimes honey in that and other things that would heal your wounds. And they would warm it up and pour it on your wounds and it would help heal. It really does. It does to the, today even. <laughs> but that's the picture of the Holy Spirit. He's also called the, the living water, the oil, the olive oil was always a picture of the Spirit. And Jesus, right, Jesus being our high priest that he is, 
What was the high priest's job in that holy place in the temple? He would take the olive oil and he would pour it into the seven golden lampstand to keep the flames burning bright and hot, right? You want your heart to burn with God's love. And that's what being filled with the Holy Spirit is like. It's like this burning love in your heart that only comes from God. God, the Holy Spirit, poured into your heart. And that's what the great high priest did. Jesus, Hebrews says, he is our great high priest. And he is in that holy place. And he pours into the seven gold lampstand, which Revelation says is the churches, which is you if you're a believer, which is me. The church is not a building. It's a person. It's, it's believers and followers of Jesus Christ who belong to him, and he pours his oil into us. So it's just beautiful, right? All right, let's continue a little bit into this Romans chapter 5 scripture. Here we go. And the Holy Spirit who was given to us, for while we were still helpless, in some translations say sinners, right? That's a good translation of it. At the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. So who's the ungodly? I am. You are. We are. We are all ungodly because the Bible says, even in the Old Testament, that all have sinned and, and fall short of the glory of God, that, that there's none who is righteous. No, not one. There's none who does good. We might do some good things, but overall, we've failed. We've, we're ungodly. And some people try and say they are godly and they're good. No, deep down they know they're not. And that's why we needed Jesus to come on this great rescue mission, Yeshua, right? He came as the Messiah to die for our sins, just like that Passover lamb and the blood that was marked on the doorposts and lentil, which is the picture of your heart, the blood of the lamb, Jesus, his blood, marking your heart, your soul, your spirit is what saves you from the death angel and gives you life, right? And that's the picture of it. And then it continues here. It says, For one will hardly die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a, the good person, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us that, in what, that while we were still sinners, there it is, Christ died for us. Christ died for us, much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. That is so beautiful, you guys. And I've got a story for you that, that illustrates this well. Um, I was in 3rd Ranger Battalion, and I was in Alpha Company, but Bravo Company was deployed. We were out in White Sands Missile Range, uh, it's kind of near Fort Bliss, Texas, and we were doing some training there. And they actually built this mock-up um, building, this village. Uh, the, we have carpenters and the special ops. And they built these mock-up, and the train was just right for it too, but these mock-up village that was, it was actually Osama bin Laden's uh, village that he was living in in Sudan. That's what they built it off of. And we were rehearsing to go in over and over and over to do this mission because he was making chemical weapons there and we had to get a little sample of it to prove to the, the world that he was doing this. That was going to be part of the justification, one of the scenarios. So anyway, we're, we're training for this out in the middle of the desert. And all of a sudden, they took Bravo Company away with Delta Force. They went to go train and get ready because they were going to Somalia. That's that movie Black Hawk Down, if you've seen it. It's a good movie, by the way. You might want to check it out. But those were friends of mine. I was in Alpha Company. They were in Bravo. And they were over there. And one of the things that struck me is when they told me this story, before the movie came out, I knew it, of these two Delta operators, Randy and Gordon. So Gordy and, and Randy, they called them. These guys were high above the city during this gnarly firefight. And one of the Blackhawks got shot down in one part of the city. Then suddenly another one was shot down and it crash landed in another part of the city. Yet there was a survivor, Mike Durant, the pilot. He was the survivor. They could hear him on the radio. And they could see literally cloud, a cloud of angry Somalis of, in Mogadishu coming toward that crash site. And they had to do something about it. But they, they were ordered, all the helicopters were ordered at that time to fly up higher out of the range of these modified RPGs that were air bursting and taking out the hydraulics. So these two guys, Gordy and, and Randy, volunteered to go down there. 
They knew the the risk. They knew it was probably going to be death. They would shoot to their last rounds. That's exactly what happened. But they volunteered to do it. And they went down there. They landed. They fought their way into the crash site. They got Mike. They, they put him in a little safe spot away from the crash site. And then they became what is the Bible would call the propitiation. They became the focus of the wrath of this crowd that wanted blood to be satisfied. And they shot these two brave men. They shot to their very last rounds. And then they were shot and killed and dragged through the streets. But they became the focus of that that mob's wrath. That's what Jesus did. He became the focus of God's wrath, God's righteous wrath, actually. And he satisfied it fully and completely so that we could be hidden away and saved. And that's exactly what happened to that pilot, Mike Durant. They found him later. He became a hostage, but he lived because that that mob's wrath was satisfied. And later he was rescued and brought back to America. He's alive and well today. And he tears up every time he tells this story because those two men had great love for him. And they were willing to lay down their lives for him. Just like this scripture says, right? It says... Here it says that uh, for one will hardly die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone would even dare die. But God demonstrates his own love toward his love toward us, and that while we were still sinners rebelling against him, right? Christ died for us. He became the propitiation, the blood sacrifice for us. And it's beautiful. So if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you can do that right now, my friend. This could be the greatest moment of your life. You might as well do it. He came down on that rescue mission. God came down on a rescue mission to save you. God the Son, He loves you. And it was the Father's plan from the very beginning. And He did it for you, my friend. And He wants to save you. All you have to do is surrender yourself to Him and turn from your ways, your sinful ways, and turn to God. That's what repentance means. Would you like to do that? If you would like to do that, you can say this simple prayer with me, and it's from your heart to God. You're not praying to me or anybody else. Just stop what you're doing and say this prayer if you would like to receive Jesus Christ into your life to be your Lord, your Savior, and to follow him. Would you like to do that? Say this prayer after me. Ready? Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner and I'm sorry for my sin. I choose to turn from my sin and to follow you. I believe that you died on the cross, Jesus. I believe that you shed your blood for me. I also believe that in three days you were raised from the dead and you're alive today. And I choose to follow you as my Lord, and as my Savior from this day forward. Please help me to do that. Thank you for forgiving me, and thank you for loving me. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, amen, my friend. God loves you, and he has saved you. And if you did that, hey, comment down below. Tell me, because I just want to pray for you. Make sure you're getting plugged into a good church that that teaches the Bible or a group that teaches the Bible. You have fellowship with other believers and make sure you're reading your Bible every day and praying every day and trust him. He loves you. Even if things go dry in a couple of years, whatever, trust God. Trust what he says in this word because he loves you. Hey, I love you too. God bless you, my friend.